Today we have organized for you a very interesting program whereby we are graced today our rest of honor, sitting Minister of State, Mr. Tan Kat Hao, Minister of Communication and Information, as well as Minister of National Development. And we also would like to also thank the host of uh, today's program from NCS who actually kindly sponsored this program, as well as the venue sponsor, Jafto, who gave us this nice venue here. Okay. Can I invite Mr. Anthony? Thank you. Good afternoon. Senior Minister of State, Minister of State, Minister of Information and National Development, Mr. Tan Thank you for raising the occasion today. Ms. Yen Chong, Executive Director, SG Tech, uh, Immediate Past Chairman, Mr. Lau Shihao, uh, and EXCO members, and ladies and gentlemen, very good afternoon. Uh, thank you for coming to today's event. Forward together the Singapore way by SG Tech Smart Nation Charter. Allow me to uh, do a real intro to about SG Tech. In case uh, you are still you are not aware about SG Tech or you are not a member yet, uh, we are actually a very big uh, TAC trade association that uh, have more than one thousand members. Uh, what we do is we advocate for change and drive enablers of tech innovation innovation and accelerate tech adoption um, to spur greater sustainability. So this is our mission. Uh, we are a non-profit organization. Smart Nation chapter is a sub-chapter of SG Tech and uh, our mission, we have three initiatives that we have located. You see, uh, today I'm very fortunate to have EXCO members coming from SMEs, LSE and MNCs. Together, we try to drive smart, smart city initiative and help Singapore companies grow. So what do we actually advocate? So there are three initiatives that I drive this year. Number one, thought leadership. Thought leadership is where we come together, where we share knowledge, technologies, ideas, and then we promote companies with opportunities to collaborate. And then we have membership collaboration. Being part of the Smart Nation chapters, whether you're from the upstream technology or downstream, we come together to raise awareness and adoption of smart solutions. In the past two years when we are, we are under the pandemic, smart city projects are off to unfold. But since April this year, the region has opened up. We are seeing a lot of activities re being reunited, and uh, we are quite excited about the coming few years. Finally, in internationalization, we also realize that the smart city or smart nation solutions cannot be handled by one company alone. It is a large ecosystem. Therefore, for startups and SMEs, or even LSEs, you need to come together in the ecosystem and we will want to help you go internationally and grow from there. So I'd like to share, in 2019, PME actually speak in a Smart Nation Summit in a closing dialogue, and I quote him, for us being a Smart Nation, it's not about flaunting Red Sea technology. But it is about applying technology to solve real problems that will make a difference to people's life and across the whole of society. So this was in 2019. And just want to show you all what Singapore has achieved from 2019 to today. We are the world's smartest city. You can check this reference on the EDB website. Three years in a row, right? Ranked by IMB and SUTV, focusing on 118 countries. And, uh, there are several index, index markets. The details you can find on the website, there is a detailed report. So in there, the classified smart city is an urban setting that applies technology to enhance the benefits and diminish the shortcomings of urbanization for citizens. So this is a very important thing, how we achieve. And how did we achieve that? Because from e-government solutions to as a city and to the nationwide level implementation, we score really well in all these industries. So I think as Singaporean and Singapore companies, we should be really proud of ourselves. In closing, okay, the click is not very good today. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I just want to share my personal views, and these are my personal views. What would be the future of smart cities? Because we are the world's smartest city, therefore I think we all we probably are qualified, we are qualified 
maybe to develop Smart City OS for the rest of the region, a blueprint, a type of basic OS, you know, like an Android, where people can start building applications on top. Maybe that's what Singapore could do. Right? But for me, what is a real Smart City or Smart Mission solution? What should it achieve? The four components that I think I'm personally quite close to what I want to achieve here is that it has to be purposeful. Right? It has to be collaborative and interoperable. We shouldn't have a different set of solutions in different countries. Then it has to be scalable and finally sustainable. All this together, we hope from Singapore side, we provide a solution that will improve the quality of life of people around the world, and in fact, starting from Singapore. So thank you very much. Okay. Okay, next, uh, we're going to have a highlight program, which is the fireside chat. Okay, why is it interesting? Because we're going to bring a dialogue of various people. The minister will come on the stage. As well, we're going to bring a global MNC. All right, we're going to bring also a, a single company. And we're going to bring some uh, a user, a, a owner all right, from JTC to come on board to share. And all this will be moderated by a consultant. All right. So can I invite Mr. Kevin Chu to have the moderator? Thanks very much, Jonathan. Very nice to be here. So nice to see all of you. Uh, I'm very happy to introduce our panel. Uh, first, uh, I mean, I, I think uh, actually... Oh, yeah. Thank you. We're so used to... Uh, we're so used to this program. Uh, uh, as a quick introduction, uh, I think uh, today we're very privileged to have several uh, very honoured uh, and esteemed panellists. Uh, of course, we have our uh, SMS, Tanya uh, Takia uh, uh, We have uh, our chairman for Smart Nation chapter, uh, Anthony. Uh, I would also like to welcome um, uh, Andy Sim, Mr. Andy Sim, who is Transformation Director of the uh, Government Strategic Business Group at NCS, uh, as well as James Tan, Director of the Smart District Division at JTC Corp. Uh, can we all welcome our panelists? <laughs> intended to bring some colour to this idea of follow together the Singapore way. What I think uh, it will be very nice uh, is to hear different perspectives as earlier Jonathan had talked about, but I think also it will be a very nice opportunity for us to have as a dialogue, this closed room of to hear from all of you what some of your uh, challenges, your aspirations, your ideas might be as well. Uh, SMS has uh, very kindly uh, uh, asked that we, we keep this uh, in a way quite informal, uh, keep it two-way, uh, use it as a, as, a, as a brainstorming session perhaps all together as well. So I just want to encourage you all, uh, later on, I'll open up some time for us all to chat, to, to contribute. Uh, as you are talking, uh, let us know who you are, what organisation you are from. Also help me to keep the, the ground that we can cover as much as possible by keeping your comments uh, quite concise if you can, right, on your questions. Uh, let's start talking about uh, our SG Smart Nation ambitions. Singapore as a smart nation has a pretty good track record uh, for, creating our, for boosting our economy, for driving jobs, uh, we have a very nice integrated, seamless, uh, uh, frictionless way to design our smart cities. Uh, we take a systems approach to our smart cities. We blend technology with urban planning, with policy, with technology, with management methods, and so on. Uh, I guess my first question to the panelists, uh, and of course I'll, I'll, I'll let uh, SMS uh, start first. Uh, what kind of capabilities or mix of capabilities do you see uh, that are unique to Singapore companies or Singapore Inc. Uh, when it comes to smart cities? Hi, good afternoon everyone. Thanks uh, for having me on this panel. Um, actually, uh, my panelists are probably much well qualified and uh, 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 much more experienced in this area than me. Uh, developer to uh, system integrator to technology providers. But maybe it just allow me to provide a perspective. And I will just take off from what uh, was quoted uh, uh, in the slide, uh, what was said by Prime Minister Lee uh, three years ago. And, and that, that hasn't changed. What is at a fundamental level about smart nation, smart city, is about improving the lives of our citizens, making better use of our living environment, making sure we continue to a city that thrives, that people can call home, you feel comfortable in, safe and secure, and use technology to solve real problems, to create tangible benefits to people living 
in Singapore, and that hasn't changed the vision and fundamental driver for our smart city, smart nation, and vision. But I will lay on with a couple of things. One is I think there are significant opportunities for us to better use technology, and, uh, and I'm very grateful to the uh, uh, Kelvin and uh, uh, Anthony about talking about some of the rankings, etc. Um, I would say we are still a work in progress, very much trying to better experiment, better try things out, what works, what doesn't work, and continue to learn. And we are humble enough to say that we have to learn from the rest of the world, learn from many other cities in the world who have done a good job. So it's a continual work in progress, never resting, but a relentless focus of how to use technology to benefit uh, people's lives. And if you look at the long-term plan review that was uh, launched few weeks ago, maybe a month plus ago, the exhibition is ongoing, how we think about net use of these 50 years, there are significant opportunities. As we better optimize our net, um, we have to deal with uh, constraints like carbon, climate change, we have to build taller, we have to go underground, we have create more green and blue spaces for people, for next generation. There's so much opportunities to better use technology, whether it's in infrastructure, technology like sensors, connectivity, better use of technology like moving to a cloud, better use of mobile applications, AI, machine learning to uh, improve the efficiency of services. So much tech, so much opportunities that I think we can use technology. So that's the first point. The second point I will make is that then what competitive advantage do our companies have vis-a-vis -vis, uh, other companies and other cities around the world in how we think about using technology? I would say there are a few ingredients, and uh, one ingredient is that really it's about a systems approach to smart cities, smart nation. You no know, one technology can solve all problems, right? Um, there's no silver bullet, silver solution to using technology to solve all problems. It requires multidiscipline, especially when you talk about smart cities and smart nation, because we think about the living environment, the building environment, it's not just the use of technology. But so the design of space, the use of the space in the community, the space in our living areas, the space in our uh, gardens and parks, and to be able to bring different, different disciplines together, not just the technological expertise, but how we think about design spaces, how we think about architecture, how we think about building, how we think about engineering, I think it's one capability that we can bring to the table. Second is really around, I would say, trust. As we use more technology, more pervasively in our lives, uh, sensors, uh, devices, questions about cyber security, questions about data privacy, personal data protection, issues around how do you think about uh, reliance, resilience and reliance on technology all comes into play. And trust is an important ingredient. And trust of not just within the society, the people using the services, but also trust between the government, the regulators, the service providers, and uh, international engagements, outreach in uh, other, other countries, trust between the service providers and other countries' regulators. So I think that trust element is important as well. Last but not least, I would say the ability for us to think out of the box and be innovative. Um, necessity is the mother of uh, innovation, and Singapore we have to be innovative and we have to use our the limited land size that we have the space we have, and to innovate under conditions of constraint, I think that's something that can set our companies apart. So, quick points, there are opportunities, I think Singapore certainly needs it, but I think at the same time there are opportunities for companies to build on this and have a view towards internationalization. Beautifully said. So, later we will dovetail that very nicely into <laughs> why we should collaborate, because Across the disciplines, I think that there's a lot of value that we can all do together. Let me hear from the other panelists. Do you have any thoughts on what makes Singapore team <laughs> unique in the way that we approach smart cities? Uh, thank you, SMS Tan. You know, the SMS Tan seemed to have actually read my uh, presentation <laughs> <laughs> because actually, uh, what I will be sharing later is about the collaborative framework for us to achieve the smart city outcome. You know, so a lot of these things that actually SMS Tan just shared. Uh, is exactly where I see actually Singapore's capability is. You know, not so much us individually, but as a, as a Singapore as a whole. Singapore is a brand. You know, when I've done in my 30 over years, you know, working in uh, 
MNCs from working with local company. You know, one of the things that stands out very clearly is Singapore's way of doing it. You know, uh, we may be different from other people, but I think as what SMS Tan said, out of necessity, we grew. And in fact, actually, just to give you a hint, my closing slide uh, for my that uh, is, is a statement that our founding member made in 1965. You know, the, if you think about the way we have gone about building our smart city, you know, it starts off actually with the purpose of making sure that the people's happiness matters. And then from there, you know, we have over the years bring people on board to actually uh, to build this. I see this very much as what we need to do in Singapore as well, because you know, if, uh, in, uh, in a case of uh, my experience and our company, uh, NCS, you know, we have a track record over the last 40 years of supporting government's enterprise in digitizing, in building a lot of these systems across, you know, uh, to other parts of the world. I think we can do our part here, you know, in contributing to the uh, industry by working with other players. Let's complement each other, and in complement each other, I think we can bring up that capability. So, so in short, I think the capability is not about individual, but the capability is selling the support player. Uh, hi, uh, uh, I'm speaking on uh, behalf of things. Uh, in a way, uh, how we approach the, 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 the smart city uh, initiative uh, was the of sustainability uh, as well as sustainability. So uh, GDC, as you know, uh, we are a real estate developer, the clear in the industry area. But we also develop this district, uh, like one off and proposed district. So when we design all this district, uh, uh, in the earlier days, uh, we look for productivity, we look for scalability, we want to put Singapore on the road map, you know, we go for the industry that has the highest growth. But as we uh, become more and more mature, uh, we need to look at how well we can sustain this estate. Uh, and a lot of the approach in JVC uh, today is that when we build an estate, we need to start to look at how we can actually uh, reduce our carbon footprint. That's one. The second one is how can we bring digital uh, services to our estate? A seamless way. So, for example, uh, we used to just say, hey, uh, we do a building and then we need to cool the building and then we just install air and so on. But now we need to do proper master plan. Uh, maybe we should uh, deploy a district cooling system so that it's more energy efficient. Right? And then we aggregate the market. Uh, then on top of that, we need to figure out how can we make the district more collaborative, build an ecosystem around it. How can we bring smart uh, business? To the estate. Say, for example, uh, a lot of the delivery today, you do Grab, uh, you do uh, Ninja Bed, that, that brings things into the estate. Uh, as time goes by, our aging population will set. And then we have less and less people who can do all this. We will need to rely on robots. But today, our infrastructure might not be ready for that. Uh, and how can we prepare ourselves and co create the industry as well as the, the people where they can build smart systems and apps that can interact with our estate? So that you know all these uh, systems, like whether it's a smart app or a robot system or a drone even, can you know uh, come in and use our facility, whether it's a new system, a door system, a car park system. Uh, now all these systems are kind of uh, accessible to members of public or even the industry. Uh, in fact, like say for example, if it's not only purely for business, it is from the social aspect. If someone wants to build a app that helps the visually handicapped use our uh, facilities, uh, they can do so. So this is some of the approach that uh, JTC is looking at today, uh, so that we are able to support uh, those people who work, live uh, within our uh, estate. So, you know, we, we talked about many uh, strengths of Singapore, and I think uh, in addition, I think it's important to acknowledge uh, how far we've come, but I think it's also good to think about where we, there might be still some gaps. Uh, when we go into overseas countries, for example, we don't have a lot of potentials. When we compare to uh, other city, uh, uh, cities and other companies that may have done things at immense scale, maybe some of our implementations may lack that. Uh, there's even something to be said, you know, when I talk to friends uh, who have been in Hong Kong, they'll say that, you know, we are very strict in the way that we do things, right? Whereas other people are, are very smart and coming up with interesting contract formats and things like that. 
Uh, I'm wondering, you know, uh, from a, a panel's perspective, what do you all see to be some ways that collaboration can help us uh, overcome some of some maybe gaps, maybe weaknesses uh, uh, that Singapore companies and Singapore make might have. Also, uh, because we don't have that much time today, today is my, my shortest ever moderation. I'm going to ask two <laughs> questions, and then I'm going to leave it to you guys, okay? So prepare your questions already. After this, I'm going to hear from you guys. Okay, maybe I'll, I'll just start and be quick about this. I think uh, Singapore, we are a city state. And, and I think we are a perfect model for a prototype, a sandbox, because we are so well structured in infra, in wireless connection. Everything we test here works seamlessly. Then you go overseas and try a solution for those tech companies, you'll find that Suddenly you have latency problem, you have power issues and, and what have you. But we are not going to sell all these solutions to solve that problem. But we have been, since the early 2000s, we find our national blueprint, digitalization. Then from implementation, we have gone on to cyber security protection, digital trust. So you can see we are very structured and progressively rolling out this one. That's why we are number one. I think um, this is very important. So for Singapore companies, myself being previously in MNC for 11 years, then going to SME, my personal advice is don't go to the region thinking it's Singapore. You need to respect the culture, the business practice, understand the regulation and the regulatory policies. You do collaborations and you do buy-in to create win-win. And this collab that we incidentally form is to try to advocate some parts of this. Hopefully, we can create and find you along the way a good sample to go out together in the market. So that's it. Other, any other ideas about uh, forms of collaboration? You know, could be R and D, could be go to market together, could be about cross selling clients. Any other things that you do? Just, just to take uh, to follow the point that Anthony actually just mentioned. Um, one of the things that actually we find is that, uh, or at least I find in my experience, is that a lot of Singapore companies actually go overseas, thinking, you know, taking the, the view that uh, you know, the world is the same as Singapore, but it's not. You know? And I think this could be actually, in my view, one of our biggest weakness, uh, which is the reason why uh, for the study that we have actually just concluded, which I will be sharing later, is that we look at actually city, city archetypes. You know, we try to actually find common patterns and link with city based on archetype. You know, and that actually help us to actually look at uh, you know when you go approach the city based on a different archetype, you actually have a better appreciation of what are the kind of things that maybe works in Singapore that I can apply there. What are the things that actually works in other places that maybe you know can apply as well? And we have to be actually open to that. So, so my my point here is that I think. As Singapore company, you know, uh, one of our weakness sometimes is that we're not open enough. And then, you know, because the, the other fact is that Singapore is a good kind of like lab for us to test, but often because when it's small, we tend to compete with one another rather than trying to actually create, uh, you know, a total sum that is actually bigger for everyone. You know, I've gone overseas, you know, with some of the uh, Singapore company, uh, and often when I say, you know, we can collaborate. You know, uh, it surprises actually uh, uh, those those what you call the, the people from overseas because they think that you know Singapore as Singapore company we should be competing against one another. You know, so that whole concept of actually parading Singapore companies say these are the five companies make your choice. Maybe that's not the best way to do it, which is why we'll be launching Collect later. Let me open up some time here from the floor. Make sure that you get enough time. Uh, just you know, let us know if you have any thoughts, any comments, any questions, ideas. Please go ahead. Good afternoon, SNS and Twitter members. Uh, my name is Bill Billy. Um, I'm from Sing Global. Um, if I may take ourselves back a couple of decades, actually, I belong to that era, so uh, allow me. Um, if you look back in the 90s, we have this thing called IT 2000, which is to take Singapore, uh, trusting both uh, IT strategies into the new facility. 
And then we have uh, in 205, uh, intelligent nation uh, is called Critical Team IM. And, and that was under uh, premium gold job compensation. And it was to uh, chart Singapore's national strategy uh, to bring us, you know, to be a developed nation. Right? And one of the ideas is to have, uh, to be the first nation in the world to have a national uh, inter-com infrastructure, which uh, was called NGBM, National Broadband Network, to connect uh, the whole, yeah, connect fam uh, all aspects of society, family, work, and, and trade. Yeah. So, in that process, we produced a very detailed uh, strategy plan targeted at 10 uh, industries. Right? And, and those are very good material. I'm just wondering whether we should leverage on some of the findings from that. And also today, we have all the ITM, you know, the Industry Transformation Map, which is also ITM. So we have a lot of ideas and solutions. So perhaps we can, you know, synthesize this and, and, and maybe coordinate the efforts so that, you know, our, our vendors can actually leverage on this and take it overseas and also implement locally. So that, that's my, my point of suggestion. Thanks very much. I'm not sure if anybody likes to comment on this. Okay. I'll just something to, uh, Okay, um, because uh, I belong to the age that I'm ready when you Okay, I think my, my, if you look at actually the way Singapore has progressed, my view is that I think in the year 2000 or so, we were looking at connected cities. You know, so when you look at our IT plan, it's very much about connecting, making sure that uh, it's accessible to all. I think we'll achieve that. We'll achieve that well. And then after that, like you say, you know, we start to actually look at the whole aspect of technology. And then more recently, actually, the smart nation, in my view, is about the quality, uh, the, the, the meaning of life now. And so you even look at the whole progression that Singapore has taken, it's starting with connecting to quality of life, you know, making services actually accessible. But now, actually, at this present age, people are looking for meaning of life now. So if you look at our, our smart nation uh, uh, vision, it's about enabling everyone to be a meaningful and good life. Yeah. So we've actually gone that far. Yeah. I think from, has the industry actually caught up with us? I think this is where a lot of these, like say, the industry transformation uh, map now has to start to come in to look at actually how to bring the rest of Singapore across the IT. Because the, the way, you know, even when we look at things like uh, uh, all these things about AI, data, and all that, it's not about just getting more data scientists. It's also making sure that the people on the ground know how to use them. And I think that transformation is already taking place. Uh, you know, the government has actually put in quite a fair bit of funding to support them, which I'm sure SMS can actually talk more about it and think and it's going by industry by industry. So my understanding is the big environment is one of the first one that you know is going to be targeted to actually try some of that. thanks Andy uh, uh, very good summary but feel that Andy about uh, his evolution and uh, the path that we take around digitalization and uh, uh, using IT in Singapore. Uh, and I would say that it's really the foundation that built over many decades. So I think the project that uh, Bill mentioned about the national broadband network, actually we have five of the most, every single home in Singapore, every single business. And you thought about it, and the way I reflected about it, actually last two years of COVID, the ability of businesses able to pivot for employees to work from home, able to continue transacting with customers, servicing customers, engaging vendors, even those overseas, Children and kids can go back to study from home, home-based learning during a pandemic. Things were all possible because of the connectivity infrastructure we have created. Decades to invest in it, whether it's fiber to home or mobile connectivity, and the resilience of the, the quality of the network. Those are many years of investment that were actually very grateful to the earlier generation of policymakers, industry leaders for being part of this journey. And we are building on this foundation, even as we talk about the next lab or next phase of our smart 
salvation drive. Uh, indeed, now it's going to the big uh, every industry uh, under the Future Economy Council, uh, FEC, every industry having its own industry transformation plan, which is basically a plan of how we think about uh, transforming the industry. Yeah. Hospitality, retail, manufacturing, good environment, as I mentioned by Andy. And within each of these ITMs, for sure, there actually is a, a, a plan called the Industry Digital Plan, IDP, for sure. And if within the IDP, it maps out the kind of digitalization set of capabilities needed by the companies in that sector. The SME in the manufacturing very different from SME in retail, very different from SME in construction. So very tailored to the sector, the set of uh, support that the government comes in to provide together with industry. So certainly building on that. But I want to also come back to the earlier point about uh, where the uh, opportunities are. Uh, I, I take a point by uh, both uh, Anthony and me that actually we cannot just replicate what we do in Singapore to anywhere else in the world. Firstly, we must have some humility that uh, every part of the world is very different from Singapore. Uh, the local context, the needs, the kind of consumers, and they may need different things from us and what we do in Singapore. So being very nimble and agile, that's certainly one of the areas. But also able to solve, look at opportunities in terms of solving problems that are important to Singapore that also may be relevant for the rest of the world. And maybe I just want to point out two areas which I think both for us to think about together as part of the collab uh, effort. One is about thinking about brownfield. Um, you know, Singapore and uh, many other major cities in the world are actually very built up. So when you think about brownfield, existing buildings, for example in Singapore, Almost 50% of our buildings are above 30 years old. It's very significant because as you think about a much more sustainable, greener environment, it means that the buildings themselves need to meet certain energy efficiency standards, maintenance standards, the old, the older buildings are, you have other maintenance issues, operation issues. How do we use new technology to solve some of these brownfield existing building issues? Not so easy, right? But if we can solve it in a uh, cost effective way, integrated way, this solution will be very useful for many other cities in the world. Second, you think about sustainability, it's a big issue for many countries in the world, including Singapore. It's existential to a large extent. But when we talk about sustainability in a, in a city uh, context, what do we mean? It's not just about having more green and blue spaces, it's about doing things much more optimally, whether district cooling, reducing the energy footprint of the building. And it's not just about using technology, less aircon, but the way we design the building, the way we operate it, the way we think about the materials, the paints of the buildings. These are many important problem statements that will come out in the coming years that will be important to Singapore, that I think will be important to many parts of the world as well. And to be able to approach the problems, solutioning it not just from a technology point of view, or just a viewing point of view, but integrating the different disciplines, integrating across the different domains, like what JTC is doing and many other uh, companies are doing, I think it creates a competitive advantage for Singapore, that Singapore companies that not many people can follow, right? Because where else in the world can you find uh, uh, sites where you can bring different solutions together, different parties together to solve common problems that may be actually replicable to other parts of the world? I hope that Singapore continues to be a place where such innovation can happen. Yeah. Maybe I can take a, a shot at that one as well. I'm also committed uh, that uh, SMS is here. But, uh, <laughs> I don't want to uh, overstep. Uh, but let's say five years uh, from JTC, uh, a lot of the time when we talk to uh, the industry players, uh, but of course we are happy to engage with you. Uh, but what we see uh, many a time is a set of people just show us what are all the nice things that you have. Uh, but it's very hard to, for us to visualize your app product. Uh, but sometimes when we go on business trip, uh, we look at other cities, uh, other countries, wow, they show us all the nice implementation that you have. Uh, in fact, uh, some things are so cutting edge that there are actually no buyers yet, but they already implemented somewhere. Uh, and I think that will actually help us a lot if you need your own talk to, if you talk to your own solution then we actually can convince us as a buyer uh, that hey, uh, I think this is really okay, and this is something that uh, we would like to have. Yeah, so I think that will help that respect. Yeah, yeah. I just want to build on what uh, James said, which is an important point. I think uh, JTC is a very much a 
tough finder and the, the way a uh, leader progress, progressing buyer in this space. They are a developer, but also actually a sophisticated smart buyer. And I think for Singapore, in terms of construction output, government accounts for 60% or, or more of the construction output every year. <coughs> Industrial buildings, commercial buildings, MRT stations, HDB, we are the major buyer in Singapore. And it's our interest to create an ecosystem where such innovation can happen. And we are quite prepared to work together, uh, JTC and other other what we call government procuring entities, GPEs for short, are prepared to work with industries to find some of these innovative solutions and test bait it, right, to make sure whether it works, whether solar panels or the HDB rooftops, solar panels or reservoirs new kind of material coating, new ways of putting a digital platform like what we're doing, mobile digital district, we are prepared to. So I would say that not just collab in terms of bringing ecosystem players together, let's also bring the buyers in together to create this kind of ecosystem that's a virtual side. Thank you so much. You know, I, we, could, we could go on and on. I really wish we had more time, but we are so fast already at the time already. Uh, uh, I think maybe just a very quick summary. Uh, uh, there are many, many opportunities that are out there, both in Singapore and beyond. Uh, I think as competitive advantages, our ability to integrate seamlessly, multidisciplinary, to create a system skill, to create trust, I think those are strengths that coming together will do. Um, I'm, I'm personally quite heartened to hear about the, the very open and uh, experimental position and stance that uh, at least our government is willing to partner with industry for. And for us here as industry, I think uh, our, our, our follow-on activity just after this uh, is maybe a good first step to bring all of you in so that we can talk to some collaborations together. Please uh, join me to thank all the panelists together. Thank you. Moment, I think we're going to have a, a, a new program launching out. Uh, sorry, I just add one more thing. I, I used to give this story that uh, in the year 2004, there was one man who is heartbroken, rejected by his girlfriend, drunk and very sad. He went to his room, he went on his laptop, and that night, he created one of the biggest companies in the world, Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> and, and how is it possible? Because Facebook is a signal uh, technology can, but can you can, can one man go in the room one night and create a smart city? Can? No way, right? Because a smart city requires hardware, software, security, uh, AI, ML, platform, domain expertise. So it brings so much. So what is important is that we have to work together. And today, and not only just the technology guys are coming together, but the buyers are also coming in together from the SMDJO and DPC uh, coming up. So we're going to have a new program and I'll pass over to Kelvin to introduce the program. Thank you. Thanks, Kelvin. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm, I'm very thrilled uh, to announce the formation and the launch of the SG Tech Smart Nation Chapter Collab. So what is this collab, this idea that we have? You know, with all that talk on collaboration, I think this uh, ground-up industry-led initiative is intended to help members, SG Tech members, all of us together, to build connections to forge collaboration. And there are three sort of key principles. You can think of it as CD. Okay? First is about collaboration, then it's about discovery, and then third is to enable. Okay? When it comes to collaboration, the whole idea is that we are better together. We can do so much more together because we're talking about smart city. It has to be a systems approach. We'll go further as Team Singapore. We're, and for me, uh, you know, in the last few months, interacting with the committee here, I personally have found great benefit in making many good friends as well. So that's a, that's a bonus for us. Uh, secondly, when it comes to Discover, I think what we see SG Tech uh, to be is a neutral platform for industry to come together to engage with problem statement owners. These could be private developers, could be SNDGO, could be uh, JTC, for example, who have uh, agreed to also partner with us to speed their problem statements together. Uh, we hope also to enable for us all to come together to build relationships, but also to see how we can harmonize our service offerings, to have joint service offerings, build our credentials together, go to market together, and scale together. Right? So CDE is the whole objective. We see this to take place in the course of this coming year, starting from August over four runs, so four quarterly meetings, and that's what people who are signing into this, uh, this uh, signing your blood into this, uh, are committing <laughs> to do. Okay? It's just four meetings, right? What we're we doing uh, in round one, in workshop one, essentially is really about um, sharing each individual capabilities, right? What is it that you do? Uh, how is it that we can harmonize with each other? We try to build a deeper understanding of each other's uh, capabilities as well. Uh, and then we will publish a smart nation ecosystem capability map. So this is what coming together as Singapore Inc. stands for when it comes to smart cities. A smart nation. 
In workshop two, what we will do is we will invite uh, some at least a problem owner uh, to come in and share what their uh, key challenges are, their problem statements, and then we will form collaborations together with them uh, uh, when we we take up their problem statements and then we will start brainstorming together. Workshop three is really about facilitating the partnering and participating companies to thoughtfully harmonize their capabilities together to have joint uh, integrated problems uh, from a solution set that we can bring to them. Uh, and this can take place across different teams. It could be a smart campus team, for example. It could be a smart industry park team. It could be a, a, a Congo digital industry team where we learn more about the data or how we can make our city become a net zero city, for example. Uh, different teams. Lastly, workshop four, after we've come together, uh, we hope to be able to strategize on new leads, new opportunities. You know, I think all of us individually, we have our own client base, we have our own uh, relationships. How can we take our shared capabilities and go to market together? So that will be session four, right? So this is what we are sort of signing on to. Uh, this is an open call to all of you to join us in this collab. Uh, if you are keen to participate after this, please get hold of any one of us uh, or the SG Tech, the good folks at SG Tech. Uh, to ask how we can, we can get on board. Uh, and to start the ball rolling, we've already uh, put together an initial list, inaugural list of 16 companies of different uh, sizes and shapes. Uh, you'll see a wide range of capabilities uh, that they bring, but this is really just the beginning. We, this is not meant to be an exclusive kind of club. We want to be as inclusive as possible with as many parties coming together as possible. But again, you know, we want to play well together. We want to essentially solve problems that each of us cannot solve on our own, that we need to rely on all, us all together to solve. So, maybe let's welcome the participating companies who are present here uh, to the front for two separate photos with SMS time. Uh, maybe let me first invite uh, SMS time to the front. In our first group photo, maybe let me invite uh, Jonathan, uh, again, our, our dear EXO member, as well as uh, Managing Director of Unibis. Uh, let me invite Shi Ho, our immediate past president. Uh, Smart Nation uh, of uh, Smart Nation chapter as well as CEO of the Technology. Uh, of course, let me invite Yen, uh, our ED for SG Tech. Uh, uh, of course, I'm the Yen. <laughs> our Smart Nation chapter chair. Uh, Nam Guan, who is uh, our first vice chair as well as senior director at Dell Technologies. Uh, Karen, where are you? Karen, who is uh, SG Tech's uh, ex co as well as regional sales director for ASEAN at C Scaler. And yes, and managing actor of NCS. As well as Miss Lin, Isabella Xiao, uh, our EXCO as well as Regional Center Director, okay. Public Center as Plant Inc. Correct, no? Uh, 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 I see. <laughs> <laughs> Daryl, Chong, <laughs> Robin, Miss <laughs> Lin, <laughs> uh, Anthony Jehao, Gordon, <laughs> Robert Nick, Terry, and Nick. You need a smart solution. <laughs> <laughs> Thank 
so much. Can anybody want to take their seats? Again, this is just the first starting inaugural call for ToLab. Once again, invite all of you to join us. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Before we move to the next part of the program, uh, SMS Sun, I understand you need to leave for the next program. You need a very busy man. No, no, thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks, thank everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, as SMS time moves on uh, to this next program, we shall, we shall, our next segment will be, uh, will be a present, two more presentations. Uh, one will be the first one will be my NCS, where my Andy uh, Andy will be presenting on a collaborative framework to achieve a smart city outcome. I understand you'll be doing a lot of studies on this, and we're very privileged today to hear it from you. I understand the speaker has the privilege of taking up the mask. <laughs> okay, now, yeah, indeed, I'm actually very excited, you know, to be sharing the uh, this aspect of smart city because I really see smart city as an opportunity uh, for us to create a place where people can actually come together to live meaningful and fulfilled life, enabled seamlessly by technology, uh, empowering uh, everyone you know, through opportunities. You know, I had a, a good privilege, I would say, you know, of working uh, uh, in 2015 in a project in Singapore called the uh, Giving Dot SG. You know, uh, and with that project, you know, uh, it has actually grown to about more than half a, uh, a million people. You know, subscribing to that is a uh, platform that is intended to let everyone come together to live that meaningful life. I see now, you know, standing before me an opportunity for us to actually launch this smart city study. You know, and with it an opportunity to bring the industry together and say how do we work together to actually to achieve the outcome for Smart City. So before I start, I'd just like to acknowledge and thank my boss Sam, you know, uh, for commissioning this study because uh, he's the one who actually put in the money for me to actually get this done. So that is important, you know. Like in any project that you do, you always need to get a funder. Uh, this is the title, and, and earlier I mentioned, you know, that it is important actually for us when we start looking at working together, we need to look at creating it through a collaborative framework. But let me start out by sharing three aspects of Smart City, the why, what, and the how. You know, why do we even bother about Smart City? It's, it's a really big opportunity, Smart City. I think if you just look at the just four global trends today, you know, it really indicate that uh, the way that we're building city today is not sustainable. In fact, we need to actually build truly a smarter city. Take a look at uh, rapid urbanization. Today, about fifty-two percent of the world population lives in cities. You know, uh, by twenty fifty, that's going to grow to sixty-eight percent. That's another more than two billion people. Current model, not sustainable. Second point, if you look at uh, the aspect of climate change, 3% of the Earth's surface is, uh, 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 is actually uh, occupied by city, or city occupied 3% of the Earth's surface. You know? But it accounts for almost 80% of the, uh, you know, the gas emission. Think about it, you know, when we add another 2 billion there, what's going to happen? You know, so clearly not sustainable as well. Next, if you look at the industrial revolution, I think most of us here are more than familiar with that, so I don't have to say very much. But I do believe that we're on the verge of something new, the Web 3.0. You know, it's coming and it's going to merge the whole physical and cyber together. It's going to bring the human and the machine together to create a world that is totally different. You know, so if we think that today it has technology has changed the way we live, we work, we play, wait till three year old comes up. So I think there is a lot of that you know we need to be concerned about. And then of course uh, 
demographic change. You know? And this is something that concerns Singapore. You know, we know that by 2030, you know, 25 percent of our population will be over 65 years old. You know, if you look at global, you know, it's not a lot better. By 20, uh, you know, by by 2050, you know, that number of people above 65, uh, I mean, what do you call above uh, 60 years old, is also over 25 percent. I'm painting this scenario here not so much to uh, frighten us, you know, but to actually offer to us that there is actually a lot of opportunity. Because I think as what SMS can't say, it's about solving problems. These are the problems. So there is definitely an urgent need for us to look at uh, how to build a truly smart city. You know? And I'm seeing a truly smart city as a city that I think very much actually uh, captured in Singapore's smart nation vision, you know, which is uh, the one that I mentioned earlier. It's really enable everyone you know, to live the way and to live life. You know, it needs to actually uh, look at people first in a smart city. And if you contrast Singapore you know, to, uh, with a, another city project that has tried and failed, uh, Toronto Sunday. I'm not sure how many here have actually heard of this project. You know, it, it's actually started by uh, Google subsidiary Alphabet, you know, called the Sidewalk Lab. You know, uh, but the problem with that project is that uh, it was actually positioned very much as internet, uh, futuristic. You know, uh, looking at actually solving all the, uh, the the future problem in terms of uh, they talk about inclusiveness, they talk about sustainability, but it was actually built very much along technology, you know, rather than looking at actually drawing people on board. And I think this is where, you know, if we want to look at a truly smart city, it has to be one where technology is an enabler, you know, and the focus is on meeting the real needs of people. So this is where actually it got us actually together, you know, uh, and says, why do we need to actually do this study? You know, the reason is because when we look around, you know, a lot of the smart city, you know, we've seen actually uh, a lot as trying, but not many has actually fulfilled its intended outcome. You know, so hence, uh, you know, NCS, you know, we've got more than four years of experience providing a tech solution to city government together with Ethan uh, uh, strategy uh, that uh, uses its intensive insight of the 200 plus uh, cities in the world, you know, we came together and say, why don't we start studying this and say, you know, and understand what needs to be done for us actually to build a truly smart city. And I, I would say that there are four principles that I would just sum up very quickly because I'm a, I'm a simple person. I like to make it simple. I see smart city basically has to be one about people first. You know, two, you know, it should be built with on trust. I think that you know the foundation of trust. You know, many of these projects fail, like I've seen in Toronto, I've seen all these places, it's because it doesn't have the element of trust. You know? And then you know it uses data as an enabler, you know, uh, that one we can't run away from it. You know, as much as I think uh, there is always talk about oh uh, you could use data to make it into a civilian state, you know, I think there is no actually escape from the fact we need data you know, and then create insight. But whether you look at stripping off the, the uh, identifier, make it actually safer, you use the other technology like multi-party computation, that's a different thing. But you still need actually to look at data, you know. And then finally, collaboration. I think, you know, we have heard a, a lot of people being said today that is the smart city cannot be built for just one organization. So what then actually NCS and Ether did is that we actually commit, I mean we started this study to look at actually three aspects of smart city. One, we need actually a fuller definition of smart city. Smart city cannot be just about technology, it cannot be just about you know all the sensors and all that. You know, it has to be more. So you know this is what I'm sharing. Next, we look at actually as I, I uh, mentioned earlier, that we look at actually what are the common patterns commonality of cities and form some kind of archetype. And then finally, you know, which is what we would like to introduce is a framework called necessity. 
and this framework you know uh, combines all the different elements of smart city to make it successful. It's, as I mentioned, smart city is not just a technology. So this let me start off first with our point of view. What we see smart city to be. Smart city should be number one the why. It is to advance community. It is for the people. You know, it is a lead people advance community. So that is the why. You know, uh, and then what is it about? It must drive actually the outcome. And these outcomes, you know, based on our study, uh, it shows that uh, government and citizens, you know, desire these six outcomes. Despite their differences, actually, uh, they still actually drive these six outcomes. And then, the, how do you do it? By strategically integrating the different components into new technology. And the key to this is drive it through the urban function. You know, I, I'm not going to uh, go too deep into this, but just to give you a view that uh, when we look at actually the outcome, you know, uh, because some people will be asking, what is lovable versus kind? You know, the idea of lovable means, you know, it is like actually you look at Singapore, we're moving actually quite fair bit into this lovable space. Uh, what you are in the planning and all that, looking at actually building space uh, that allows community to come together uh, to showcase arts, culture, you know, and then, you know, to build a kind of identity. So that's actually what the lover is. As opposed to kind, kind is what I used to be associated with previously when I built the internet you know, which is actually built a very inclusive society. That's very much the MC, MCCY uh, uh, charter. Yeah. So, so this is, you know, based on these, the, uh, the way we actually describe it, then we actually came up with actually what I just suggested. So next, I look at the archetype, you know, from a uh, uh, understanding that, you know, we need actually a bigger, a broader, a fuller definition, next we look at the archetype, you know, and we were able to look at out of the cities that we had uh, studied, group them into six different archetypes, which we feel comfortable that uh, it actually uh, are able to represent, you know, most of the cities that we and we, uh, the model that we use is that uh, we use the, uh, the study from the Shell uh, framework. We look at Singapore's uh, C, uh, area of research from our uh, city for level, uh, center for livable city. You know, we look at the OCDD model and we combine it together and we came up with this six you know, uh, which I'll go into a little bit more detail. Yeah. So then, you know, if, and, and against these six archetypes then, we look at actually the, what is the, the density, the population, the ability to, to invest. In fact, actually in our report itself, we also look at the kind of technology that they might need to consider as well. So like for example, it's, it's natural that, you know, if a city is looking at a crowded developed city that looks at security as actually something that's important, then it tends to be actually a, uh, an interest to actually build the city around the aspect of uh, investing in technology that keeps them safe, you know, as an outcome. Versus one that's looking at level you know, Singapore is very much actually at the stage, I would say, looking at level where right? we're looking now at the meaning of life and not just actually the basic. That was in the 60s, but now, you know, we're in the 21st century when we look at the, the other aspect. Okay, let me now introduce what we mean by this framework. So when we actually look at all these estates, now we've got to look at the how, because we can talk about, you know, the why, the what we need to do. You know, it is important actually for us to make this practical. And this is how do we actually now create a framework that allow us to, as NCS, you know, uh, engage our partners, and this is how do we come together, you know, to then build this framework. So the, uh, the, the framework starts off with outcome first. So it's actually the, the outcome at the top, and then it goes down to look at the different uh, the level functions. So I'll go into a little bit more detail in terms of uh, what that means. So I mentioned earlier, sustainable, you know, uh, uh, resilient, inclusive, kind, safe, blah, blah, blah. These are the outcomes that we're actually captured. You know. It is what, you know, from our study as well, I think it's important that uh, by using outcome as a way, 
that uh, it is a better chance for us to actually bring people together to be in Versus actually, you know, uh, discussion about if you start to actually go into output, you go into the fine line, then it, you tend to actually go to silos. So this is actually where the difference is. And then, you know, the, this is the part that NCS actually uh, has done well over the last four years. We've done a lot of projects, you know, in the, uh, uh, for city government in those urban uh, uh, function space, you know. Depending on actually the outcome, it's likely that the emphasis for the different application will be different. You know, so if you look at sustainable, maybe it would be more towards the environmental protection, you know, versus another. Then we, we you know we look at the next layer, which is who should be involved actually when you look at actually creating a smart city. Stakeholder is just as important, you know, and again, different projects might be different because some could be more private funded, some you know, be more drawing the government support as well. And then the next, you know, is to look at uh, the whole solution element, you know, instead of actually initially when we start out by just looking at infrastructure, but we feel that actually it should be more than infrastructure. You know, it is actually to look at actually the whole solution element of which infrastructure is one of them. And then only after that, then we start looking at the next layer, which is uh, the technology. All of us are familiar. Uh, just going to go through uh, a little bit quicker because of uh, the interest of time. But you can always come and talk to us, you know, after this event, uh, and uh, you know, if you want to collaborate with us. Uh, then we look at the next element, which is the, the operating the principle. Often, actually, uh, you know, this part is actually when people uh, do smart city planning, they actually miss up this portion, which is actually just important. How do we do it? You know, do we set up the principle of for this particular smart city, you know, if it's going to be more inclusive, you know, then how do you actually make sure that, you know, you might actually have to look at efficiency, probably, uh, you know, get your balance between efficiency versus inclusion. So that is that whole consideration that you know one has to really should look at. And then finally, you know, the one that's just as important, you need to actually look at the budget. And, uh, because I've seen actually a lot of smart city projects, especially in our region, where it comes up with a great plan, you know, achieve sustainability goal and all that. But until now they're still looking for the funding because the government may not get the funding. You know, then they're looking for actually a private uh, funder. But private funder has a very short uh, window of funding. They don't look at actually the same way to achieve it. So this is actually uh, all put together. You know, I have to present, I have to kind of uh, present this in a layer form, but in reality, actually, if you look at the way I would see this, is that, you know, you'll be holding, we should hold the outcome as what we want to go after. Then we look at actually the, uh, the different urban function. The rest of it should be as dynamic as possible. You know, in, in my days, uh, designing, I mean, building in digital energy, I call this the composable services concept. You know, you have to build, actually, you have to allow the different players that which can come contribute to different parts, and then driving still towards the common outcome. So, you know, this is my concluding remark. Uh, basically, you know, from our study, what is actually important is that it shows that uh, truly smart city strive for citizen-centric uh, and outcome-based solution. Uh, number two, you know, uh, they often actually engage the citizen to the point that actually uh, a lot of living cities, in fact, they do co-creation. Yeah. And I, I see that is actually where the future will be. It's even co-creation and not just engagement. Uh, you know, and then I mentioned about the architect and the holistic framework. Let me actually finish off with uh, a last slide that I promise that I, I will share a bit about that. You know, this is actually, the, I believe, uh, encapsulate what Singapore's way is. When in 1965, uh, just before Singapore left Malaysia, he, our founding father, Mr. Lee Kuan Yew, made that statement that my business is the 
what is my people's uh, the people's happiness in the sixties? Housing. That's where it is. You know, we look at jobs. You know, easy, big, attractive. You know, all this. Uh, we look at healthcare. You know, of course, education. We have over the years actually, uh, in fact, actually, incidentally, then how the Singapore company go overseas with this? Actually, if you think about it, how did China actually took the policy then to actually elevate the poverty of its people? It's actually this, this concept. You know, when Tan Xiaobi actually came to Singapore in 1970, he met up with Ian uh, at that time, I mean, you know, he got new, you know, and he actually took the Singapore model and said it's not the people's activity. And the rest is actually this. Look at actually the history now, the way China is actually. So again, think of this, this is the Singapore way. You know, in the in the 80s we set up NCB. In the 90s, we look at transforming our, our people from an industry-based economy to a knowledge-based economy, NLB, uh, NCS, you know, all these actually came out, you know, to look at actually building that. Now fast forward to today, I think the challenge for us is four in terms of transforming within Singapore, but at the same time, an opportunity for us to take Singapore overseas. And I think this is where actually I, I'm excited, you know, that we have a lot of partners here who are willing to come on board. And most important, we have actually user, you know, who's willing to say this is the problem and we have to actually share with the problem, come and help me to achieve so. You know, so with this, uh, I, I just like to say that, you know, end with a bullish note and uh, if any one of you has any feedback, any questions, if any way you want to collaborate with us, this is our contact, you know, smart city at ncs.com.sg. Uh, we love to hear from you. Thank you. Okay, the next speaker we, the next speaker we have, uh, is, we are hearing from the, the vendor technology side. Right? So we're going to hear it from the user, planner, and the buyer side. So we're going to have James Chance from JTC Big Rock. Okay, uh, Please give me a round of applause. <laughs> <course. laughs> so my name is James. Uh, I'm the director for the Smart City Division of Goods. Uh, so today I'm supposed to represent the, the buyer. Um, but I think I need to clarify that JTC cannot buy all the things in the world. In fact, my motive here today is to explain to you in our approach towards a smart city. Uh, and that is uh, something that Andy has mentioned. It's about co creation. In fact, uh, from the industry perspective, right, if JDC cannot buy all the things in the world, then uh, how can our state uh, help the economy grow? Because we are also, after all, an FDI agency. Right? So the importance for us is to spur uh, the opportunity uh, for business. So what I wanted to, uh, in my deck today, it can fairly be a little bit technical in terms of what we are planning to do at Open Digital District. Uh, in fact, what I'm going to talk about is the Open Digital Platform. Uh, and I think some of you among you uh, probably have heard about this already, or I first went through the same deck, this bear with me, uh, for being a broken recorder. But I think the intent is uh, to explain that uh, with this platform, what we are hoping to do is that if you have a smart new idea, come to our estate and deploy it. Uh, uh, and of course, uh, not how exactly it can be done with further discussion. But I hope that uh, through this, we can have some uh, ideas. Uh, and then, like for example, I'm already working with NCS, uh, also like uh, I don't know, Continental, yeah, I'm very confident of here. And a couple of other industry players. Uh, to develop some of this uh, smart machine. So without further ado, let me let me uh, go through what I have. Yeah, nice. <laughs> yeah. So uh, the JTC portfolio, uh, we kind of uh, operate ten percent of Singapore land because a lot of our land are industrial. We do have a heavy manufacturing industry within Singapore. Part of the master planning, uh, 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 in, in the good old days, uh, and we are. In a way, like a microcosm of a smart city. Say, for example, in one north, we actually have condo meeting inside there. Yeah. Even though we don't manage those condos, but they form an ecosystem within uh, one north. Right? And then in PDD, it's the same. 
we're going to have service apartments, we're going to have retail, we're going to have uh, offices, we're going to have academia, which is SIT, and then so on, right? So that's our portfolio. So, JDC as a district owner and operator, we are responsible for facility management. We are responsible for security, landscaping, uh, customer service, and tenant. And in fact, within our facility, we also manage traffic. If you go to Jurong Island, you know, anything that's screwed up, you know, people will call the agency, they don't call other agencies. Yeah. So, in a way, we are like a microcosm of a smart city. Right, uh, so these are the, the people that uh, we work with, SP Group and so on, uh, the whole, whole long list. Uh, we work together and then uh, this is where we bring all the operations together uh, and we deliver a service. Uh, what I want to talk about now is uh, the next generation smart district. Uh, in fact, smart district, you know, all the districts form together, then it becomes a smart district. Uh, and when KDC looks at a smart district, uh, we have visited smart cities around the world. Korea, went to Germany, went to Finland, went to the US. Uh, a lot of the effort revolves around buying all these smart systems. Like we all you know, we can buy a smart car park, I can, I can buy a uh, district cooling system, I can buy some smart toilet from you. But is that all for, for us you know, as, as a uh, country uh, when we want our district to be smart? Because then, then it's just a matter of picking money against money, right? Uh, at some point we will lose. Because we are, we are resource scarce. So how do we uh, beat the competition? So within the district, right, uh, if you look at the challenges on top, we have actually proprietary system. Of course, uh, I know when we are in the business, we need to protect our IP, we can understand why certain things are proprietary. But because of that, right, uh, as a customer, uh, we are dealing with, we, we will be dealing with uh, unstructured data and we will be dealing with silo operations. But it is an end result. Uh, and how do we solve this? Uh, and let JDC as the estate owner be able to, able to set speak. Uh, so we come up with a uh, smart OS, which is an operating system. This operating, operating system is supposed to unify uh, most, if not all, of the systems within the estate. And I'll explain why uh, it can give us uh, all these benefits in terms of cost you know, and resource optimization and so on. Sorry, I'm overshot. So the concept of the uh, ODP is that uh, we, we will have a middle way. So uh, I think just now uh, I saw a slide from oh, Andy, very interesting. You have a uh, found, sound found, you know, or it's like very much like a computer system, right? Something like a North Bridge and South Bridge. Uh, and what we are building now is a software that sits on top of what we have. This is the operating system. In the heart of it, the middle way is like a kernel, provides services. So it provides IoT services, it provides command and control systems, it provides services like um, uh, data analytics and so on. Uh, and, on and on top of that, right, uh, we have smart systems like uh, smart grid, uh, facial recognition, urban logistics, district cooling and so on, which we spoke quite a bit about. Uh, and what in the nutshell is that we want to use this platform, let all the systems talk to each other, and then we are able to use uh, some of these systems when they talk to each other to achieve sustainability targets. Not only that, we want to use this middleware to provide services to businesses, to citizens. Uh, how do we do that? Through co-creation. Say for example, if I open my API for you to talk to my if I open my API for you to talk to my car park, now you can do business with my tenant. Uh, you can say, hey, uh, let me help you build an uh, aircon app. Don't worry, I have access to the JDC API. Uh, I can do that for you. But JDC is not going to do that for my tenant. I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm not NCS. <laughs> Neither am I, uh, 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 say, essential and so on. Uh, and that kind of, and, and more, than, more than just uh, aircon, right? Maybe there's leaves and, and car parks. Uh, but our imagination alone within JDC is not enough. Maybe the industry can come, can come to us. Actually, you have other ideas other services that the state can uh, right? uh, that, that, That's how we spur requirements. Uh, and, but with this platform, uh, with all these uh, interoperability in place, this is only possible if we have that layer. If not, then it's depending, uh, we are dependent on, you know, Jonathan to talk to NT, and then they all to disagree, and then that's it for you to get service. 
And uh, when I was designing the open digital platform, uh, some of the lessons learned uh, from my previous uh, experience in designing system is that if your system don't have a proper front end, if your system don't have the ability to bring forth uh, a value add, uh, and people cannot visualize it, uh, then the platform is as good as useless. So we have been thinking a lot about uh, building dashboards, you know, just like anyone else in the world. But I think in terms of dashboard, uh, while they are very useful for certain operations, it might not be enough to push the frontier. Uh, so when we look at uh, the technology, and then we, as we scan, we came across the digital tool, uh, and JVC immediately can connect the dot because as a real estate developer, we have land planners, we have uh, building designers, and then we have construction uh, aid, uh, experts uh, who are very good in AEC. And we also operate as a facility management. We also market. So with all these value chain, you, you, you realize we actually can build a 3D environment very easily because we have all the information, the entire value chain, right from your CAD design to your beam, to your GIS. And then because we operate, we have access to our building system. So when everything flows together, we can build a digital twin. Uh, and the digital twin comes in many flavors, right? You know, today, you talk to people and say, oh, I have a digital twin. But it could be as simple as a visual replica to something that is very complex at the top. Uh, people like uh, Autodesk and all these, they tell you they have AI uh, generative adaptive. Uh, you know, <laughs> I saw the demonstration very powerful. The AI will design the motorbike, the AI will design a bridge over the, the river, and that is uh, something like uh, you know, right at the top. Uh, whereas at the bottom, it could be just a replica of something. Yeah, and we also call it a digital twin. Uh, so for the ODP, we will have a digital twin. And the twin is selective, it depends on. Uh, the needs. So for JVC, of course, our twin we will it will be fairly complex. Uh, it allows us to you know integrate with our workflow, uh, allow us to do predictive and preventive monitoring and so on, uh, and that gives us a lot of value. But from the citizen perspective, from the industry perspective, or even our tenant, uh, a subset of this digital digital twin can be provided. To allow smarter business development. Say, for example, right, if I publish certain data layer within PDD from the digital district, um, maybe that uh, can give the industry an idea whereby you want to develop some uh, smart business to deploy. We don't know what it is, uh, which is why we are here you know, to, 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 to talk to you guys. So, uh, I don't want to talk about this, uh, but basically, what it meant is that uh, the ODP will empower the living lab with yeah. Congo Digital District. The Congo Digital District will be a litmus test for some of these new concepts. Uh, and we are hoping that once we are successful in the uh, PDD, maybe later on, the other estates of JDC we will start to put it up. And then we can move uh, our innovative solution beyond <coughs> just Congo. We can maybe go to JID. So today, uh, uh, the Open Digital Platform is already kind of uh, commissioned uh, and is done in JDC Submit, uh, which is our corporate HQ. We are actually deploying it uh, in Woodlands North Coast this year and then subsequently to Congo Digital District, which will be the big bang uh, uh, deployment. Uh, so within the components itself, all these, uh, in terms of sense making, operational situation, awareness, command and control, and so on, are all part of the game. So, as I mentioned, it's already commissioned to submit. Uh, we welcome you, uh, just like NCS, <laughs> uh, to come and explore with us what are the things that you want to do uh, in terms of, like say for example, some of these use cases to deploy a robot uh, that does last mile delivery. For example, if, let's say you go to Grab, uh, let's say you manage to go into Panda, it says, hey, I want to use robots to deliver f and uh, uh, purchase, you know, to customer to JTC submit building. Come to us and we will open the API for you. In fact, we have playbooks uh, that we plan to publish that you can interface with our turnstile, interface with our leaves. And then maybe, who knows, uh, maybe uh, again, you know, we can sponsor us a smart car park. <laughs> we can do some trial with you. Uh, we can also 
before you can see something. Right? Uh, I think we can play a video. Uh, it's a four minutes video. Do we have time? Do we have time? Four minutes video. Do we have time? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, this gives you a flavor of how the open digital platform looks like. system that enables efficient management of multiple estates across Singapore. The platform converts and displays sensor, geospatial and building data on an integrated 3D platform. In the country overview, enable map overlays of weather data, sensor data and transport, aircraft and maritime vessel data. Capture open data from government agencies and display useful data geographically. Receive automated notifications according to preset limits. Send via system alerts or an instant messaging platform. Estate managers can easily navigate across the various estates highlighted. State Command and Control Interface provides estate managers real-time updates on estate operations, such as power and water consumption, and electricity loads. In the building overview, visualize geographical positions of systems and assets, across various building levels and zones in real time. Enable responsive maintenance with the help of real-time incident reports from the digital twin. Assign tasks to the nearest available staff to carry out maintenance and attend to incidents. The JTC Summit a 32-story, 450,000-square-foot building constructed in 2000. Building floor plans are painstakingly converted from CAD to BIM and meticulously textured in 3D to create a lifelike digital replica of the building. The open digital platform allows for seamless plug-and-play integration with existing building systems. Monitor and manage systems such as district pooling and smart grid, car parks, human flow monitoring, fleet management and urban logistics. Measure efficiency and build distribution with the help of charts and data analytics, allowing for more efficient resource allocation and management. Automate interactions between systems and repetitive processes such as meal and package deliveries. Model real-world conditions within the platform. Simulate events over the last 24 hours using real-world historical data in playback mode. Simulate emergency situations to plan emergency response procedures and train staff to respond quickly in a real event. Thank you very much. So that gives you a flavor of what are the systems that today you can submit that you can connect. What didn't come out very uh, strongly uh, is the part of today part, uh, the ability to uh, build applications on top. Uh, because currently that now. <laughs> That's why the video doesn't uh, come out very strongly in that aspect. We're hoping to refresh that video soon uh, where we have more uh, collaborators coming on board. Uh, with that, I end my presentation. Thank you.
Thank you everyone. We have come to the end of it. Uh, if you look at it today, we, we must hear a good uh, range of speakers as well as a fire chat. Oh, and by now, I think you must be a lot of things in your mind that you want to share, you want to discuss, you want to create a collaboration. And the next program is just that we're going to have a networking session. And I think it's, it's also the time that we can connect with the, the various parties here, with the panel, as well as among yourself. And uh, so we're going to have the, uh, we're going to move. And before that, I'd like to also share that uh, do connect also with the architect. Uh, there are LinkedIn posts here, I'm bringing the code for Hashtag Selling. For <laughs> LinkedIn as well as Facebook, connect in there. And if you are a lot of member of Hashtag, uh, also we are also cordially invite you also to talk to any one of us and join as a member. And if you'd like to also join as a collab as well, also do talk to us and we also get you on board. Right? So the next program, as I said, is going to be some black snack as well as swings and also a magazine session. Right? Thank you so much. Thank you.